Hello everyone and welcome to Study IQ English. I am Joy C. Joy. In this video, we are going to discuss about DICGC and Export Credit Guarantee Corporation. This is from Chapter 13, Insurance in India from Ramesh Singh for Indian Economy. Let's get started. In the last class, we discussed about the concept of reinsurance and we also discussed about the challenges that the reinsurance industry face in India. Now, we are getting started with DICGC. If you remember, in the last video, we have already given an introduction regarding the <coughs> DICGC. Now, we are going to check the background, the criticism and also regarding the status of DICGC. We have already seen two important things regarding DICGC. One is that the deposit insurance, that is the maximum ceiling of deposit insurance has been increased from 1 lakh to 5 lakh. This is one of the major changes that has taken place from 1 lakh, 1 lakh rupees to 5 lakh rupees. This is one of the major change that has taken place recently in 2020. Now, second thing is that the scheme that is the DICGC, it includes private sector banks, cooperative banks and even the branches of foreign banks in India. So we have to understand that this is not just applicable to the public sector banks in India. But there are certain exceptions. What are these exemptions? Deposits of the foreign governments, deposits of central and state governments and interbank deposits are not covered under the deposit insurance uh, scheme. Now coming to the background, in 2017-18, the government proposed the Financial Resolution and Deposit Insurance Bill, that is FRDI Bill. FRDI stands for Financial Resolution and Deposit Insurance. Now, uh, this was in 17-18 and the aim of Financial Resolution and Deposit Insurance Bill was to reform the existing provisions relating to deposit insurance and credit guarantee. To make reforms or to bring changes to the already existing deposit insurance and credit guarantee. The major criticism that the bill uh, faced, uh, these were the criticisms. First one, for the clause which allowed writing down of liabilities of the failed bank. This was one of the major criticisms uh, that this bill had a uh, clause or there was a provision in the bill which allowed writing down of liabilities of failed bank. Now, what is meant by writing down of liabilities of a failed bank? A failed bank means a bank which has undergone the process of liquidation or winding up. <coughs> this is a failed bank. Now, writing down the liabilities, what does it mean? That means the obligations of the failed bank has to be written off. This was one of the provisions which faced a very severe criticism. This clause was inter, uh, inferred by stakeholders as bailing clause. What is meant by bailing clause? When a financial help comes in, the, uh, in from within the bank or financial institution. So this was considered as a bailing clause. The joint parliamentary committee, JPC, also had certain apprehensions re relating to it. Actually, there are various parliamentary committees which scrutinizes bills and then gives recommendations. So, there was a joint parliamentary committee in this regard and this committee also had certain apprehensions relating to the bill. The government withdrew the bill in July 2018 and announced the need for more time to examine the related issues. <coughs> so, this is actually the background of the uh, DICGC and uh, regarding the financial resolution and deposit insurance bill. Now, since 1991, the deposit insurance limit has been only up to 1 lakh. We have already seen that since 1991. Why 1991 is a very important year? This is because it was the year when the reforms had taken place in the economy. It is due to the influence of economic reforms. The deposit insurance limit was only 1 lakh rupees. Many countries revised their deposit insurance limits after the global financial crisis of 2008. We know global financial crisis of 2008 was a major milestone uh, or it was a major event in case of many economies or we can rather say the world economy itself and every country or most of the countries started taking uh, systemic steps or systemic changes to their financial system and the overall economy after the crisis. 
in case of india it was still a little over its per capita income a per capita income uh, according to economic survey 2017 18 is 111782 <coughs> at constant prices so 1 lakh was the limit but as we have said it was increased to 5 lakh rupees in the year 2020 this is after the failure of some of the major banks uh, especially cooperative banks this was increased next we are coming to export credit guarantee corporation now before we go into export credit guarantee corporation we need to understand what is the concept of a credit guarantee <coughs> the concept of credit guarantee now credit guarantee means that you are giving guarantee for the credit now let us take for example a farmer a farmer belongs to a priority sector or we can say he is a member of a vulnerable sector called agriculture so farmer is a vulnerable um, category and uh, also a priority sector now the problem with this vulnerable category or a priority sector is that they have lack of collateral they may not have enough collateral to take institutional credit lack of collateral or bank guarantee collateral or bank guarantee <coughs> now what happens in case of lack of collateral or bank guarantee is that the banks would be not willing to lend money to this priority sectors or those vulnerable groups without a collateral or bank guarantee the reason is because there are high chances of creating npa there are high chances for creating npa or non performing assets a non performing asset is when a bank loan is overdue for a period of more than 90 days either the principal or the interest is overdue for more than 90 days it is called as a NPA or non-performing asset. So there are high chances that it can turn into an NPA. Now, what really happens here is since the banks are not willing to give loans to the vulnerable group or priority sectors because there is a high risk associated with lending to them. So here what the government does is government provides some kind of guarantee to the banks which is called as credit guarantee. Now, what is this credit guarantee? The, under this credit guarantee scheme, the government ensures to the bank that in case if these people does not make the repayment government will provide a credit guarantee or a repayment to the bank and on this promise or the credit guarantee of the government the banks may lend to the um, vulnerable group or priority sectors <coughs> and government has done this credit guarantee for many vulnerable sectors in the 2022-23 union budget also the government had announced uh, credit guarantee schemes especially for the msme sector now export let us bring this into the context of export credit guarantee we know that exports in india is also a priority sector and also that the exports are one category which needs support from the government so export credit guarantee is the credit guarantee scheme applicable to the export sector in india the overseas projects undertaken by indian companies face many political and commercial risk in the importing countries so those Indian companies or Indian manufacturers or Indian producers who make exports to foreign countries, they face a lot of problems there. It can be political issues or commercial risk, political or commercial risk in the importing countries. <coughs> now, in order to give them adequate credit insurance, uh, the government has set up Export Credit Guarantee Corporation of India. So the very purpose of establishing Export Credit Guarantee Corporation of India is to ensure that the Indian exporters who export their commodities to the foreign countries get some credit support. That is the reason or in order to cover the credit uh, insurance or uh, to provide a credit insurance coverage, the Credit Guarantee Corporation, Export Credit Guarantee Corporation has been set up under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry for medium and long term exports. This is the scope of ECGC that is it covers medium and long term exports and it is established under Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So Export Credit Guarantee Corporation works under the Ministry of uh, Commerce and Industry and also it covers medium and long term exports. 
Next, we are coming to the limitations of Export Credit Guarantee Corporation. At times, it is difficult for ECGC to cover pure commercial risk in issues like long repayment period, the large value of contracts, difficult economic and political conditions of the importing country, together with the fact that reinsurance cover is generally not available for such projects. So this is the <coughs> limitation for ECGC. That is, many a times, ECGC is not able to cover pure commercial risk. Now, what are the... Uh, Examples of commercial risk. Commercial risk, uh, risk examples include long repayment period. For example, an Indian exporter exporting commodities to a foreign country. Now, the importer may not pay the dues on time. So, this may take a very long repayment time. So, such kind of risks are not covered under ECGC. Again, the large value of contracts, difficult economic conditions, political conditions, etc. in the importing country. And reinsurance coverage is also generally not available for such kind of projects. So these are all some of the issues faced by the ECGC or we can say limitations. These are uh, the limits or the boundaries for the ECGC. Many times such projects look necessary considering the economic and political relationship of India with the proposed importing country. And uh, in it means that in the absence of credit insurance cover, the ability of Indian exporters to go for such exports remain hampered. So it is very important to have an export coverage for those uh, industries or for those companies or entities from India. Many developed economies, uh, in many developed economies, such projects are covered on and underwritten on government account. So this is the model that many of the developed countries follow. So this is about the Export Credit Guarantee Corporation and also about the Deposit Insurance. We will be continuing with this module in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you all the very best.